how have you approached virtual summits and which ones have you participated in? Great one. Joe Polish, okay, let, I'll let him answer. <laughs> how have I approached, so, okay, I guess it's- virtual it, summits, and which ones have you participated in? Um, which I haven't, I don't even remember. I've been in a whole yeah. bunch. Yeah, a lot, a lot, yeah. I, again, like, I don't, I don't really keep track of these things. I've done a whole bunch. Virtual, I haven't approached it for me to make a summit. I don't, again, Movement Makers has kind of become that for me. And then I'm launching um, Brandlytics, which is gonna be focused, uh, another membership, but focused heavily on data. Uh, but I don't, I don't see myself doing my own virtual summit anytime soon. How I approach it is I wanna know who the audience is. I'm doing one tomorrow. Um, Mark Lack, is in a group is in my group with Evan Pagan. He's running his event tomorrow and he asked me if I could join. Like, hey, I'm happy to let's, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Um, I want to know who the audience is. I want to know roughly what I'm talking about. And then I think the biggest thing about virtual that people miss is you've got the opportunity to interact with the audience. The thing that gives me an edge in virtual summits is I've done so much streaming and IG lives and <laughs> so much stuff live. And I'm used to seeing a chat box come in and interact with people. Even this, I, I want it to be based off of what you guys are are asking. You know, when Zane was talking at the start and we went off on some long story, like, hey Zane, is there anybody in the chat? Like, can we can we get back to the <laughs> are there people here? You know? Like my default is to build it around who's there. And so my ideal is always set a little bit of context so that they, they know who I am and wh and why I'm here and what I'm capable of. And then and then make it based off of what they want to hear. So when you're speaking on stage, that's a little harder because there's no interaction while you're on stage. So I find myself mingling with people beforehand, understanding what their business is, why they're here, what they're all about, so that when I get on stage, I have a, a sense of the audience so I can deliver value from them. When you're doing a virtual event, you see the live feedback, you see it happening on the spot. And I love rolling with the audience. And so I don't have this game plan all laid out from the top. I have a general sense of where I wanna go and then I wanna dance with the audience because I think that's what gives them the best result. Where it's not just hearing my photocopied speech, it's jamming with the audience. The one we did recently with Eben's group that Zan was a part of. Um, Amazing. Yeah, that was, that was harder for me because it was, I couldn't see the chat. So it was me and um, uh, uh, um, James, which is Evan's business partner. We're in a Zoom. He's on Facebook and he's reading the chat and I can't see it. And so we didn't, we didn't work out the logistics ahead of time. I thought it was all gonna be in Zoom, but anyway, uh, that's my fault for not asking. And so I'm just talking to him and he's looking at the comments and that, that kind of destroys me when I'm doing a speech in a virtual summit because I love to be able to bounce with the audience. I think that's actually the greatest experience. So for people who love Q&A, it's amazing. And I would much rather do Q&A than do a set speech. For people who love doing their speeches, you can still do it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it just gives a lot more instant feedback than you would get um, in a normal speech. And I was there. It was it was one of the best ever because do you remember do you remember um, what you was what you talked about? Um, do you remember you talked about this? The ultimate coaching process. Yes. Yeah. We should we should we really should put that into movement makers. That should be a movement maker session at some point. Yeah, that's, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay. Because we talk uh, about coaching, but we don't talk about how to coach. Yes. Anyway. Or even give them, or give, or even giving them a methodology because just the part about wear their own skin is amazing. Just that that that's a whole that's a whole course in itself because mm -hmm. that's a skill set to wear someone else's skin. That if coaches could learn to do that, okay. So I just thought the whole thing was amazing, totally amazing.